time. Give them a give them your love. Show them your love. We shall begin with Stefana, and uh, it would just go down the lines. Please say it's a horrible buzz, isn't there? I don't know what to do about that. Maybe if I stand over here, um, just go down the line and say your name and the name of your movie, and then remind them what something to remind them what that movie was. Hi, I'm Stefana. I'm from the team Clueless, and our film was Aggie's World which was about a fame-hungry, delusional teenager looking for fame at any cost. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Jenny, and I was with Wee Films, and we made the film about the garden that was composting people. <laughs> Hi, I'm Megan, and I was with Lesgo Film Crew. Our film was called A Piece of Your Mind, and it was basically a sci-fi movie about how memory can be taken from you by the futuristic uh, bookkeeper, and then about selling that and gaining back memories. Hi, I'm Charleston Das. I'm from This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things, and we were with Marchfield, the big budget period piece. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alex O'Neill from We're From uh, O'Neill Creations in our film was Questions of the Tree, which is the ones that have puppets in it. Uh, I'm Grant, I was the team Scotch Film and Studios. Uh, our film was called uh, My Undead Family, and it was about zombies in a nightclub. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Xander, and our film was Looper Kaleo, and it was about uh, the woman who fed the harp to the god. Uh, I'm one half of the Benz who made Sheer Lonelies. Actually, would it be okay if my co-director came up? Because I don't think it's really fair that... Okay. So, that'd be alright then. Yes. Yeah. Usually one, but yeah. we've got room for one more. Yeah. Come on, yeah. come on. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> but, you, yeah. but just to say, you can't all have two people. That yeah. would be too much. So... I thought I'd push my luck because I was yeah, the last. Yeah, there you go. And we did the film of the really irritating graveyard gardener. And is this Ben and Ben? Yeah. Well, that makes sense, because you're both Bens. Yeah. So yeah. give them all a round of applause. Yay! Yeah. So, I hope you have some good questions. I hope you have some good questions. Yes, one already. Yeah, Voltaire and Rousseau. I think it's a very famous bookshop in Glasgow, apparently. Very popular with the students. It's incredible. They were a very unfriendly cat, though. But it was a beautiful little store to film, and we got very lucky. It's amazing. Good job. Thank you. Great location. Okay, who else had to... Uh, Charles, we have to ask you about your location. Sure. Where is that house, that grand house? Well, that house is Dalkeith Palace in Dalkeith Country Park. Uh, we did not shoot inside it. We walked past the front of it. That was a great location. Uh, I also want to ask Xander about your creepy walk into the woods. Where, which, where were you in the, in the woods there? Uh, we were just in the woods and then... <laughs> <laughs> just in the woods. And uh, an abandoned house called La Fallon House. La Fallon? La Fallon. And that, that was it. Yeah, it was creepy. Uh, and Grant, was that Cabaret Voltaire that I recognized? Yeah. Uh, and do you want to tell us about how how you got to that venue and if it was if it worked and how you you got all you had got all the the lights and sound going on and all that? Yeah, and um, basically we had a view into the place on <coughs> Friday, like I think it was like right quarter right after the kickoff event. And I was like, Oh the place doesn't look too big, and then it's like the TARDIS, it was like three things this side yeah. when we went in. And they basically went, right, this is how you just do everything. And then he just left us alone. Wow, brilliant. That worked out. Let you have a zombie dance party. Um, let's see, who else wants to talk about where their locations or where they, anybody have any? Sifana, you, what, you were in Glasgow, which, were you, were you shooting Glasgow? Or, yeah. Where, did, where, where were you shooting? We're shooting in 
Holy shit. <laughs> and um, Queen's Park. We just like decided to torment the public <laughs> with our questions. So. Yeah. And what did they think? Like, well, obviously, we saw some of the answers, but like, what else were they saying about like what is happening? <laughs> oh, they were just really confused. Yeah. They were like, who is Aggie? And I'm like, we don't know. We just <laughs> made her like last night. So, yeah, they were all, they were really nice though. They're very uh, willing to partake. Good. You know, considering we just sort of disturbed their peace <laughs> and card. Like they're all just on yeah. nice walks. And do you think that Aggie has got, grown some fans over the weekend? Is, is her world expanding? She's already world famous. She's oh. an ex-Britney. Okay, <laughs> Aggie, hear that, Aggie. <laughs> Yeah, Charles. Yeah. Sorry, just while we're on locations, um, in the period piece, there was an opera scene. I don't know if anyone oh, knows yeah. where we shot that. <laughs> yeah, G two and three. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I love that you walk. Yeah, I love that you walked into the Usher Hall, and it's come to Usher Hall's gone to come down a bit. It's been down the hill actually, but no, that was gorgeous. But anybody else have any questions for these lovely filmmakers? I've got loads. So yes. Entirely improvised, including the plot. Um, we we decided because uh, we've been doing forty-hour film projects since the very beginning, yes. two thousand and eight, um, and um, we found that they can be very stressful. I don't know if you agree. <laughs> um, so we decided we were going to improvise the whole thing. Um, we do so. We we sort of we decided on some sets, the hill, the the the, part, the, the bar. Um, and, and then we, we just, when we got to those points in the story, we just went, oh, which, which of those locations can we use next? Um, so, which is why in the outtakes you've got things like someone going, oh, there, 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 was, there was one bit where one of us went, um, we should climb the tree and then fight the dragon in the sky. Then the other one goes, uh, no, I don't think we should do that because then we'll have to make another set. <laughs> so there was a lot of bits like that, but it, it was just, you know, discovering the story as it went along. Um, and then, you know, we, uh, we're a family, we do a family show called Story Builders in the Fringe, come to the Fringe, um, where we build stories out of nothing, so we sort of just use those skills to pull them off. But it was a lot of fun. I would totally recommend improvising films. The only downside is that it took 16 hours to edit. Um, but, you know, I've had seen things with proper scripts that have taken that long to edit, so, you know. Uh, that was just whatever. Get the, 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 like all of those scenes have long bits where we're just sort of rabbiting on about anything. Um, he can't have a bath. He can't work in Pizza Hut because they can't hold the plates. Um, and then there are other things that I've forgotten. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But if he did have a bath, it would be too hot for him and he would boil. So it's probably a good thing. Yes, it's just occurred to me that he looks slightly boiled already. Actually, he does. Yeah, he's talking a lot for a boiled lobster. Yeah, no, no, no. He seems happy enough. And yeah. I just have to ask now on this lobster puppet, like he has a little mouth and everything. Where, where does one find a lobster puppet? So, Hester works in festivals quite a lot. Uh, she had to run away to go to do a pub because she's leaving at the moment. Um, but she finds things in festivals because people leave them. So that lobster turned up in a festival some years ago. It's missing a claw, which would actually make it quite good to film. Because if you got it on that side, you could see its mouth moving. Whereas with the other claw, it was like in its face. <laughs> uh, and it's also kind of ripped underneath. Um, but it's, it's, it's got a lot of history that we don't even know about that lobster. Wow, that's in part two. <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> the prequel. The prequel. Okay, who else has questions about these crazy films? I've got, I've got loads. I want to, yes, okay, back to you, yes. Yes, Sandra? teammates used uh, frequencies in the music that were supposed to make everyone feel uncomfortable and uh, yeah a little bit yeah cool and how about the voiceover how did you achieve that that was cool uh, I just put an underwater effect on my voice yeah, and that was yeah. it <laughs> it was very cool and um, yeah I, I thought your your film really had a Great unity of style. It had a very unique style, and it and it uh, kept that style.
style throughout. Is that like the kind of films that you're into, or is that the kind of films that you usually make, or is this different? Or? Um, it's similar to the stuff I usually make. Yeah, quite a lot of my stuff is like that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was about the pagan festival Lupercalia where they celebrate fertility and purity. So she's sacrificing a heart to make her garden grow for the next year. So obviously we're all, we'll, we'll all be celebrating Lupercalia this year with Xander. <laughs> Big party at his house. Uh, okay, so that kind of goes right to Jenny's film. Uh, which is also a bit of a garden of blood kind of theme. Do you want to tell us a bit about like the concept? Well, it's my husband who's a filmmaker and he had all the script, all the not script. And um, it's my allotment, which I've worked for many years. And he said, we're going to film on the allotment. I said, great, I can wait while you're busy fiddling with cameras. <laughs> Just tell me what you need to do. Um, and I didn't actually know until he said, grab that spade and kill the thing in the shed, that that's what I was going to do. <laughs> so, so that was a surprise to me as much as any of you. Um, I was at my allotment this morning, and I was a little bit creeped out. <laughs> so it's made me feel a bit... <laughs> so just to be clear, you are killing people and putting them in your compost? Yeah, and we're keeping people in the shed, and then we kill them and compost them in bits. That's quite a healthy, I guess, funeral service that you're providing. Well, there is, there is actually a precedent to that. They are in America composting human people okay. as a, an alternative when there's no sort of green space. And would you, do you think you would grow like fruit and veg to eat? Or oh yeah, yeah. Okay. good compost. I mean, and then you can all eat the... Um, we all go back, we're recycled, yeah. we're all back in the system. It's yeah, very sustainable. Funny. All the family gets to enjoy the fruits next year and yeah. celebrate grandma. Yeah, everything <laughs> comes back as uh, a potato. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, we'll probably get time for one more question. Then we'll take a break and we'll have our second screening. Yes. Uh, I'm curious, uh, how do you come up with the character of uh, Andy? <laughs> we hit the slave button. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I. He, we just sort of wanted to have fun because we've been really stressed with like the other films we've made and um, my teammates know that I really like the film Borat and so I kind of wanted to do something similar to that where we interact with the public in the context of the character. So I don't know, we just wanted to make like the new It Girl, you know, um, just something, just something fun really, that's all it is. It was indeed fun. Um, okay, I'd like to now go down the line, if you don't mind, and I'd like to start with Ben and Ben, uh, the two Bens, and um, can you please tell us uh, why should the great public here vote for your film, please? Okay. Uh, hello, oh geez, it does me like. Um, I think you should vote for our film because I think, I mean, I, I'm sure everyone else has as well, but you know, we've come together off of uni, and this is my very first film I've ever worked on in kind of like a festival thing. Wow, he's like, wait, uh, I would go and tell somebody, but I need to be here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I just think that we've all worked really hard, man. I think it's got a, a good story with a good character. Yeah, I think we put a lot of work into it, and I just want to thank everyone for more than doing sound design, Jack and Alex, and James and Stephen who couldn't be here, and uh, Sam for helping with cinematography as well. Uh, and so my co-director, Ben. Yeah, um, I was really happy with uh, sort of the variety of shots in our film, and I think it, I think it covers a decent amount of ground in the time period that we had, um, just in terms of just covering like a character and sort of being the life of that. And yeah, um, I hope you did enjoy it, um, the, yeah. I'm very happy we saw it on a cinema because I've never had a, a film of mine being shown in a cinema. So that was really, really good fun as well. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, because I had the heart put in my mouth involuntarily. <laughs> and you also had a camera in your mouth or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think you should vote for me because I wrote 
directed and edited, so I think I slept for maybe two hours <laughs> out of the four I ate. So I, that would be appreciated. And you could vote for us if you enjoy puppets drinking rum, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, I guess you should vote for Marchfield because of the audacity with which we threw ourselves into the genre. That was a whole Pride and Prejudice story in seven minutes. Uh, the BBC could do that. We can. Hi, I think you should vote for our film because individually we had incredible actors, makeup artists, locations, and I think that all combining together, it made a really incredible, unique film that had its own flavor that I think really shone through. And editing was also incredible, so, yeah. I think you should vote for our film because with a few actors, a very short time, we managed to tell a little story with an incredible twist. And I'm now creeped out in my allotment, so I deserve something in return. Because you're hot if you're part of Aggie's world. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Round of applause for the filmmakers. Okay. Now, please don't forget to vote. Again, the bag is just over on that side. Get a drink, go to the loo, get some food, whatever. Please come back for the 8 p.m. screening if you can. It will be followed by the awards party.